Are your sassafras struggling? There's a new invasive epidemic that's killing sassafras and spicebush in our area. It's called laurel wilt disease. Typically some of the first signs are wilt, early fall color, or browned leaves on trees. Um, but this disease can rapidly kill trees. On this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, we're gonna be talking about laurel wilt disease, what it is, how to spot it, and what it does to your trees. Laurel wilt disease is caused by an invasive pathogen and tiny little ambrosia beetles, also invasive, that move that pathogen from tree to tree. Both of these are thought to be native to Asia. All ambrosia beetles, and there are lots of them, both native and non-native, are fungus farmers. They bring fungi with them and put them in trees as they tunnel, and they actually eat the fungus. For the most part, these beetles are attracted to trees that are already stressed, and the fungus doesn't really hurt the tree. But in the case of the red bay ambrosia beetle, the beetles are attracted to perfectly healthy trees, and the fungus, once it gets in there, can become systemic and cause a major disease of that tree. Red bay ambrosia beetles bore into trees and shrubs and introduce the fungus with them. Once it's in there, that fungus will move into the xylem and block up the vascular system of that tree, impacting the flow of water throughout that trunk. Death can occur rapidly, within a few months to a few years for sassafras. Laurel wilt only impacts plants in the Lauraceae family, the laurel family. In our area, this includes spicebush and sassafras. Further south, there are lots of other hosts, including red bay laurel and even avocado. Despite its name, mountain laurel isn't impacted by laurel wilt disease at all. It's in a different family that is not likely to be impacted in the future. Laurel wilt symptoms include initial wilting, those leaves looking like they don't have enough water, maybe a discoloration and turning yellow, or a bright fall color, dropping leaves, symptoms that you might easily confuse with water stress. Dead sassafras leaves are kind of a reddish brown color and they'll remain attached to those trees for several weeks after they're killed by laurel wilt disease. Dieback might be centralized in one particular branch or part of the tree or throughout the whole canopy. In addition, you might get trees where the top is killed, but they're sending up new shoots out of the root system. The wood just under the bark and that vascular system can be really darkly stained with laurel wilt disease. You'll see these dark black streaky stainings, that's the fungus, in the tree as well as the tree's defensive response to it. If you look really closely, you might also see some tiny circular holes on the outside of the tree, maybe even some little toothpick uh, looking protrusions from those. That's caused by those red bay ambrosia beetles that are moving this disease from tree to tree. However, it only takes one introduction of the fungus to kill the tree, so you might not notice this, and those holes are very tiny. Laurel wilt disease is not the only thing that kills sassafras. From armillaria root rot to many other issues, if you've got declining sassafras, it's important to kind of look through all of those different symptoms to make sure what you're seeing is laurel wilt disease and not something else. Laurel wilt disease was first detected in Georgia in 2003, but now it has spread through much of the southeast, impacting 11 states already. It was first introduced to those coastal areas where wet bay laurel is the dominant uh, tree that's killed by them. Millions of trees have been killed. However, since then it's jumped further north uh, where sassafras is a more dominant uh, tree in our forests. It's still only about one to 2% of the trees in Kentucky, um, but nonetheless, it's an important tree. It's beautiful, it's in a unique niche, one of those early successional trees that will come up um, into disturbed areas or old fields as they're returning to forests. Laurel wilt was first detected in Kentucky in 2019. Since that time, it's moved up through much of Kentucky from the western, southwestern part of the state, um, across other western counties, and even up into Jefferson County. As of 2021, it's in 10 counties. 
Currently there's no treatment that can protect trees from laurel wilt. If you do find trees, you could consider cutting them down and chipping them to reduce those beetle populations. But even with that, we're not sure how effective it will be to control the populations of the red bay ambrosia beetle and to stop the spread of laurel wilt disease. Although ambrosia beetles can certainly fly from tree to tree, the main thing that's spreading them around, I think, is probably us unintentionally moving contaminated wood. Um, for example, firewood from counties that are infected to counties that don't yet have it. So a big thing that you can do is just not to move around firewood or any other wood that might have laurel wilt disease in it. Not only is this important for laurel wilt disease, but there are lots of other insects and diseases that we don't want to move around. Early detection of laurel wilt or any other invasive issue is key. So if you see something, make sure to report it to your county agent or the Kentucky Division of Forestry. Thanks for joining me today and learning more about laurel wilt disease. If you'd like to learn more, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media.